and how good he is and how he always is just making us have the feel good so that one part of the gospel is hidden but today i want to expose that part of the gospel to the children of god nobody should ever see Christianity to be without a cross. Jesus said it that we should take up our own cross and follow him. But it's unfortunate that these days we keep hearing only the sweetness of the gospel and we are not told and prepared to face the other side of the gospel. But if you can be honest with God and with yourself, Permit me to communicate truth to your spirit. Amen. Truth Amen. to your spirit. I just preached on Sunday about working your iniquities. You remember that? Amen. Yes. Amen. And I want us to continue the part two in another dimension in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4. And I'm going to read it for you. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4. Don't give any excuse for yourselves before God. I repeat, if you are walking with God, if you want to walk with God, if you have to be that child of God, please do not give any excuse to God about iniquity do you hear me yes ma because on sunday we learned that we are to work out our iniquities we are to purge ourselves so that god can be close to us we must work our salvation and then adam had an excuse why he would commit sin in the garden and the excuse that Adam gave is the iniquity and the suffering of humanity. Let us not continue what Adam did. Amen. Adam committed sin by not obeying the word of God. And when God asked him, he had the audacity to tell God an excuse that he caused it by giving him a woman. You see, whenever you give excuses and blame people and do things like that, you are not being responsible and you are not asking for mercy and favor. We lose favor from God when we blame people for what we are going through. It is either you are going through something that is written about you from the book of life. Because God knows things before they happen. Or you are going through something due to your mistake. Whether it's a mistake or not, I have come to know that there is no mistake on this planet or earth. Mm. There is nothing that happens without the permission of God. Mm. Jesus said, not even a bread from the tree will fall without the cognizance of God Almighty. And fought agonizingly against sin nor have you yet resisted and withstood to the point of pouring out your own blood hmm. what's your excuse have you gone to the state of agonizing against your sins have you fought enough against the dragon for the sins that we are committing but here we are all we can open our mouth to say the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak the spirit every day the spirit is willing the flesh is weak this flesh is not something you want to entertain Amen. how do you walk with god the best way I can explain how to walk with God is to love God. Mm. And now we are going to sow. And I'm going to ask you, what is your level? 
of the love of God? This is very serious question. Do you say you love God? Do you say, Lord, and I love you so much, and I love you, and I'm not seeing anything, and I'm even fasting, and you are not hearing me, and I'm crying on you, and you are not answering? Is there anybody here who can stand and face God and accuse him? Is there anybody here who can do anything against God? The subject is walking with God. The lesson to learn in walking with God is to have the attitude of going to his presence for help than to accuse him. We are raised as spoiled brats. Everything is being blamed on somebody. We will, the church is blaming the pastor. The pastor may be blaming the church. Mother is blaming daughter. Daughter is blaming mother. Uncle is blaming. Everybody is shifting blames here and there. We always have an excuse for the mistakes we do. I don't want to call it sin. But as a matter of fact, in the scripture of Hebrew 12, 4, the word of the Lord says, Have you resisted sin? that much don't you say the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak you are to work out your salvation and deal with iniquity our shortcomings the delays of our prayers the going round sometimes downward spiral is the cause of iniquity and it is iniquity that always drives people to hell. The iniquity of King Saul was that he loved himself. King Saul lost the throne and lost it even for his generation because of love of self. The Bible said when King Saul was supposed to obey the word of God, he was building his monument. He was thinking of fame instead of thinking of the shame in his life. He was thinking of being a hero instead of giving the glory to God. But the Bible here says, have you resisted that sin till you are bleeding? Have you resisted it? Have you resisted it? So don't ever go into praying and blaming God. I can't stand people like that. I can't. I can't stand it in a sense that we have no right to blame God for anything. I'm a human being. I'm a sinner. And I'm holding myself responsible. I am not standing here to point finger at nobody. I'm talking to myself. Diana, don't you dare think that God didn't do something right. You are to resist the sin. And you are to resist it until pouring of blood. Is that not what Hebrew said? But we haven't gone that far. We haven't gone that far. Walking with God is simple as holding yourself responsible and working on yourself. This is the gift that comes from above. This is the gift that comes from above. The gift that comes from above is for a man or a woman, is for a son of a child of God to say, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. The, 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 the Bible said, as James was dying, James could not even hold the sin of the people against them. Yet, they were killing him. Can you come to that place where you will shift blame and take responsibilities? That's when you will see the glory of God. The glory of God is given unto people that are meek. The Bible said Israel kept on blaming Moses for everything. 
and we should have been in, in, in Egypt, and we should have been eating garlic by now. You're talking about God taking you to take a land, a land that you have, a house that you didn't build with your hands. You are talking about garlic and chicken. That's how cheap we have become. This is how cheap we have given our souls out for the enemy to play with. Because God has something higher and bigger for us. But we are selling our souls for fried chicken and for garlic. That's Israel for you. Then we blame God. Oh, we should have been, we should have been slaves in Egypt than to be in this wilderness. When you know you are in a process to a destination of glory. God didn't say this was your end. He said, I will be with you in trouble. And I will deliver you and set you on high. And so every state in which you are is a process. And you don't settle on that process and cry out. You move forward. Amen. Say to yourself, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. The enemy lied to do things for us to open our mouth and say things we should not say. I've looked back at my life and I said to myself, how awful and how terrible my lips have been. I ask God for forgiveness. We're growing from glory to glory. You should be able to look back to say, I would never ever open my mouth to say such a thing anymore. Because God is good. Even when you don't understand what he is doing, I say he is good. If you don't wear this helmet of salvation to make up your mind and have your mind fixed that God is good, you keep going up, down, high, low. I can't stand Christians that are not stable. High today, low tomorrow. High today. Why? Because your mind is not making you comprehend that he's worthy to be praised. You are working by hypes. You come to church, church is good, music was good. Oh, God is so good. You get back home and things are not going the way you want. Oh, I, I've even regretted for being born again. You are not born again in the first place. Because if you are really born again, a born again, a person who is walking with God, is a person who has made up his mind, whether life or death, the mind is settled that God is good. Amen. So that whatever that is going on in your life, whether you like it or not, give him the praise. Amen. I want us to look at one of the great men in our Bible, the oldest story in the Bible, and the first book that was written in the entire Bible. And let's look at that person. Let's look at his thoughts so that we can go back home and behave and to have right attitude towards our call right attitude you see when whenever they they showing the slaves now all the slaves in libya they showing them now is all over the place and 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 people are surprised at what is going but these are the people i have been taking care of for the past let's say i can't say maybe 20 years this is the people I, I take care of as church. But I have lived in contentment and in gratitude to the extent that I have not gone out announcing and crying out for help that much. But that's how much help I will need. Whenever I cry out, Lord, these are people coming on my shoulder. And I really do need help. And the government is not helping you because you are not a Catholic living in Italy. But when I think of his goodness, I forget about my needs. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I see it as a privilege for God to trust me to take care of people who are coming out of slavery. And sometimes it's not easy to handle them. Because when people are bitter for a long time, they really react at little things. But I've mothered them, and I keep mothering them. I, and and I, look at, I look at 
people watching my life, sometimes in social media, and they see that, oh, I'm the most happiest person. Yes, I am. But whatever I am processing or going through in ministry with all these lists, if they should give it to any of the pastors, they will run away. They will not even show up with a smile on Facebook like I do. They will say heaven have left them. But when your mind is fixed on God, nothing will move you. As bad as a condition may be in Italy, which you have no clue about, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Look at the scripture. I want the children of God in this land to wake up and to serve God well. You have a car. You drive to work. <laughs> oh, man. And you have things affordable. You can even afford buying candles so your house will smell good. And you complain. But I'm talking about a place that there's nothing like being able to afford a car. And a bicycle becomes the biggest thing that somebody owes. And they are serving God. They are serving God on the bike, in the rain, on the sunshine. What are you complaining about? Why do you feel so low? And why do you feel so sad? What's the problem with us? How ungrateful can we be? Every state in which you are is a process. Amen? Amen. I want to see if somebody can pray or can speak it like this gentleman. The first book that was written on earth. You can't believe this. The first book written on earth is from the Bible. And then the first experience that somebody desired that it should be written, which is done. You can find it in Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13. Do you know it's the first book written on planet earth? The book of Job is the first book written on planet Earth. Job chapter 13, verse 15. I want to read it for you from Amplified Version. think I should read from 14. Why should I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hands, incurring the danger of God's wrath? Verse 15. I do it because though he slay me, yet will I wait for and trust him and behold, he will slay me and I have no hope. Nevertheless, I will maintain and argue my ways before God and even to his face, though he slay me. This is my salvation that I will continue to look up to God. Amen. Amen. You don't stop going to church because something didn't go right. You do not get upset with any human being. Turn it all back to God. Blame nobody for anything. Keep trusting God. Even though he slays you, trust him. Even though he may not put you at where you want to be now, trust him. This is how to walk with God. Abraham did not say, I have waited for God till I have become impotent. I won't serve God anymore. The Bible said he hoped against hope. How far have you gone with your faith? Walk with God. We are not fasting because we are frustrated. No. That's not the reason why we are fasting. We are fasting because we are assuring ourselves that we have a God. I'm not fasting.
fasting because I'm so desperately in need. Yes, I may have the needs, but I'm fasting because I love him. And whether he will do what I'm asking him or not, he is too much my God to deny him. That's how you walk with God. Don't give a space for Satan to even think he can have you back. Am I communicating? Yeah. Sit in the house of God and sit it forever. The devil is a liar. Amen. Today I was taking an inventory of my life. The Bible tells us in Psalm 90 verse 10, and am I quoting it right? That our lives we live in on earth is 70 years. And if per chance we get into 80 years, that's an extra blessing. So I'm, I was making an inventory to see how many lives, how many years more am I left with. And I said to myself, I don't even care anymore. If God answers my prayer, fine. If he doesn't, I have done more than I more than half. I'm done. I'm done. If you are 35 years old over here, you've made half of your years on planet Earth. If you are going to live 80 or 90, that's an extra blessing from God anyway. Except our salvation, everything will pass away. You have 20 houses. Which, how many beds can you sleep on? And don't you see the more you have things, the more you have the troubles of it? Maybe sometimes you have not really watched it, but I sympathize. No, we who are married, sometimes we overpose it and make those who are single to feel like without marriage, they can't make it. I sympathize with women who try to look down on the single mothers or single women or single... I don't know, but this hypocrisy... You live with somebody for years and the person doesn't even change anyway. You end up adjusting yourself to who the person is. And that's what we call marriage. Because human beings don't change. They don't change. You are sitting here in agony, crying on God. Oh, and I lost my marriage and I need this marriage. I'm telling you, sometimes that man will come in your life and you will regret it. Because human beings are human beings. Amen. Am I communicating? Amen. Human beings are human beings. Except God is the one you should trust. You're talking about having a baby. When that baby starts crying in the night, you will wish you could sleep. Amen. Ourselves. What, what is it? What is the big deal in rushing them to school, giving them the shower, putting them on the back of your car? You can't even wash your car. You can't clean up the car. You're cleaning up the car. They're bringing in food. You're rushing them in. Rush them back. Rush them in. Rush them back. What's, what's all about this world that we keep worrying ourselves and losing the love of the Father? He knows this life is temporal. He's giving us eternal life. A place we go of please. The life and the joy in heaven is so explosive. I've experienced it before. I was there. I could not have any memory of pain. It was out of my faculty. A wonderful place to go to. And I can't wait to go. When I say that, then my children are like, Mom, not now. But I tell you, even if it is now, to God be the glory. I can't wait to go. It's a place of peace. What are you looking for? That hasn't got its own trouble. A good car, an expensive car, you pay for it. The bigger the car, the more the gas. The smaller the car, the more miserable the short of, of observers. Uh, 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 how do you call it? The shock of it. Huh? Okay. The higher the car, the more difficult you climb up there. So what's all about this world? That we keep on 
crying and making us so come on rise up and give him the glory Amen. Yes. Yes. nothing yes. can be like knowing the king of kings mm. and the lord of lords mm. he's the ultimate of it mm. the ultimate of it and can i go a little further you're talking about having sex you will soon run away from it there are people crying out looking for help because they've married men that are called timeless no break <laughs> angry when they press the machine it goes to the woman faints <laughs> what are you looking for jesus, jesus is lord yeah. come on what a world that people waste their time there was a millionaire who prayed and said, if only I can make one million dollars, God, I'm done. He made a million. And he came back to say, Father, if I can make it two million, I know my world will come to, to the place of fulfillment. He made it. They asked him, are you okay? He said, three will, be, will not be bad. <laughs> They asked him, why do you need more? He said, because I bought a house, and the house is expensive, and I can't sleep over the house. I need to put some guards there to guard the house. And I was saying, the guards are not enough. He needs dogs, Alsatian dogs, big ones, so that when the thief come around, the dog come back, woo, woo. And at the end of the day, the dog takes one full chicken a day. <laughs> so more money mm -hmm. more money and then more wives nobody can tell the story better than Solomon thousand women it did not satisfy him three hundred for for wives and then is that seven hundred for concubines? Seven hundred for concubines. So the girlfriends always out <laughs> count <laughs> their wives. It still didn't work out. Two to one. Hmm? Because he was looking for a beautiful woman. Don't tell me you did a mistake by the woman you married. No, don't blame that woman. Don't even blame yourself. If you change, it is still the same. Make up your mind that you are walking with God. That's why I entitled tonight's prayer as what? Walking with God. I didn't say walking with man. Walking with God. He is the ultimate. He's taking you to eternity. Eternal life. Though he slays me, I will yet trust him. You're losing your trust in God. Where are you going to? You have nowhere to go, boy. Sit down and let's serve this God together. You have nowhere going to. There's nowhere for us. I keep saying that. The time of immaturity, feeling agitated. Oh, now I feel, I feel this. I'm so much, you know, sometimes we, go, we can go as far as, I'm so much in love with this man. I'm so much, I say you, I, I do tell my daughters, I do tell my children, you, you in love with them? Mom, I'm so much in love, and I will laugh and laugh, you know why? Because I am the one who officiates marriages all the time. And I will just watch that statement, and give that person a year or two, and now in my office there is a knock, Mom, I cannot believe this man will do that. <laughs> I, I always laugh when I hear somebody say I'm in love. I say you in love? I say you better be in love with Jesus because man is man. And God is God. Man is man. Oh Lord. Mom, the, this woman is so beautiful. I can't even sleep. I keep looking at her photo. <laughs> and I will laugh at her. <laughs> she's beautiful. Just bring her home. I'll be here. You will call me, mom. Come and carry your thing away. <laughs> what are you talking about? A human being is a human being. 
I will tell you a funny story. I have a sister that is so funny. One day, I went to my sister's room and she was, she said she was practicing how to sleep. This is funny. <laughs> so she has a mirror there and then she has a way of sleeping. She'll twist the hand this way, turn the leg that way. <laughs> and I'm like, sis, what is wrong with you? He said, listen, man is man. As beautiful as I am, it may be that the way I will sleep with my mouth open, the man will wake up and make that they say, huh? Is it the thing I married? I say, you right. <laughs> so what I do, I'm practicing how I will sleep in beauty. I said, okay, we'll see. <laughs> Can you imagine? She was practicing how, and I told her, I said, I, I, I said, you learn all the sleep beauty you do it, but when you start snoring, God will fight your battles for you. <laughs> because you're going to, yeah, what are you going to do about the snoring? I never used to snore. Till so one day my husband told me, D, you started doing it little by little. I said, yeah, I think it's catching up with me. And, and I said, but I know that my snoring will not be too loud. It will be that kind of sweet music. <laughs> he laughed. He said, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Age will catch up with you. And the beautiful lips will, will give a twist. And then you open your mouth, ah, yeah. sleeping. And the man who is in love with you will look like, did I really marry this thing? <laughs> human beings are human beings. And they go out admiring something else. Solomon told us that. He was right. He married and married and married and married, admired, 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 and admired till he, he, he had to fall into sin. He, he didn't finish anyway. <laughs> he just got too old to continue. He didn't finish. He was aged. That's why the story ended. But if not so, don't you see old men at 100 years marrying? And some of you get excited about it, and you write there, love has no age. <laughs> Polish it up and tell me, love, love is not a number. Girl, number will come. <laughs> it's only one person we want to love tonight, and his name is Yahweh. The eternal God. The only one we can trust and love. Let's look at Job 19. And this is the last verse. And we're going to take up the prayer. So we'll go offline and do the prayer. So those who are online watching, get yourself ready and fall in love with Jesus, my King. Amen. Fall in love with Jesus, my King. Amen. Don't ever look at your state and think you need one thing more. You need nothing. Mm -hmm. If God gives you the husband, praise God. Mm -hmm. If he gives you the wife, praise God. If he doesn't give you, care less. Because he knows better than us. The things that look beautiful outside are not always so. They are not always so. I thank God I have a good marriage. And my children testify. I'm not one of the preachers that pretend and yet something bad is going on. No, I have a blessed marriage. I'm blessed with that. Praise God for it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to allow it to take off my head. Neither will I look down on anyone without it. Because with or without this marriage, we are who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And we are what we are not because we married. Because Christ has sanctified us. Amen. Don't even go there. That I want to marry so that I won't fall into sin. If you want to sin, you will sin, whether you are married or not. Amen. It's not the man you are married that will stop you from fornication. If you want to sin, you will sin. Job 19.
verse 25 and 26. Americans, you say, what, 20? Huh? Mm -hmm. You don't have tea in your letters. It's okay. You don't have tea, but I have a son that has tea. His name is Tom. So I need to learn how to pronounce tea. <laughs> verse, verse 25, he says, what, for I know that my Redeemer and my Vindicator lives. And at last, he, the last one, will stand upon the earth. And after my skin, even this body has been destroyed, then from my flesh or without it, I shall see God. How strong is your faith? Can you say this like Job said? He had skin cancer. At that time, they had not discovered the name. But he was alive, yet his skin was decaying. And cancer stinks. So the Bible said he was thinking. And the best place to sit with that smell was on the trash hill. So he decided himself to be there. Because Job was a noble man. People who respect themselves don't sit down to be insulted. They avoid it. So he took himself to the dustbin and sat at where the trashes. He already categorized himself at where he belongs. And the Bible said, but the skin itches. And he had to be cutting his skin, scratching his skin with stones. His hands could not scratch it enough. This is a person who prays every day and walked with God. He found himself alive yet getting rotten. And in that state, he was able to open his mouth to say, even though my skin is getting rotten each day, I see me decaying, in the same skin, I will see God. But here we are, fed up so quick, angry so quick, disappointed so fast, Yet we call ourselves Christians because we have been giving sugary words. All we hear from the pulpit is how sweet God is and how sweet God is and how wonderful God is. And we don't have anything, any clue about how God can test our spirits and be sure we love him enough. And a little test of God, we turn our back from him. And when we are afraid to blame God, we blame people. And we call ourselves children of God. Can you believe you can go that far? Your, your test and your trial can take you that far. To the place of a rotten skin. Don't blame God. Don't blame others. Trust God. Say nothing. Just give him the praise. Rather jubilate that he sees you trustworthy to use you to speak to somebody. Because whatever you are going through is a living, talking Bible message to somebody. Someone is looking at your life to say, if she can do it, I can do it too. If he can do it, I can do it too. Don't you know that God trusts you enough to permit you to suffer? That through your suffering, his name is glorified. 
That is not the time for you to disappoint him. He trusts you for the trial you are facing. He depends on you to use you to communicate to somebody. It is greatness that brings us to afflictions. It is greatness that brings us to sufferings. It is greatness that brings us to trials. And it is greatness that puts us in conditions like this. Whatever condition you find yourself tonight, you are not crying out in fasting and prayer because you are frustrated. You are crying out in prayer because you have assurance in him. You are in fasting because you love him. You are fasting because he is good. You are trusting him because he is your father. You have opportunity to talk with him. He has been good. Each day you have a testimony. He is a good God. Your state is far better off than somebody. Someone wishes to be like you. Remember the goodness of God and praise him and bless his holy name and worship him and love him. What you don't have today, if you need it, he will bring it. Sleep as a child tonight. Sleep as a baby tonight. Despite the pending deal, sleep as a child tonight. It takes a second and all is over. Do not worry. If you have many of them, you need to repair all of them. The more you are blessed, the more you are responsible. And so walk in the confidence of what God gives you to bear. If he knows you can't bear it, he won't give it to you. Every temptation you are going through, do you know you are qualified? Did you have a skin cancer like Job? No. Your trial have not gone that much. For you to give up. The man who was left to sit on a trash hill. A down hill. That's how they call it. Still praise God right in the rubbish. He praised God right in that state. He spent all his time talking with God. But we are fortunate. That. In all our troubles, we still can be taking some chocolates. I know I can find chocolate in some of you, your bars. As bad as the condition is, you can drink a cup of milk. He is a good God. Amen. Our situation is not too bad for us to cry out and make God look like he has not been good. He is a good God. And so tonight, we are here exalting his name, praying unto him, not because he is, we are miserable, but because he's our God. We need to fast. We ought to fast. We ought to take charge of our atmosphere. Our fasting may not be even for ourselves, but for somebody who needs this prayer at this hour. God is faithful. So tonight... We are here to say we are walking with God no matter what. I know it can be very difficult, but don't allow that to get into your head. If it is difficult, you are well able. God has appointed you and have anointed you and has qualified you to face whatever you are facing. And he is more faithful. He is holy. He is righteous. He is the best friend. He is the only one who can comprehend what you are going to. So we are going to rise up and we are going to pray to our Father with confidence and boldness. We are, we are not praying to him that we are miserable. Even if we are, Job gave him the praise. He said he is the maker of heaven and earth. Job said, God, you are the God of all flesh. You can do all things. Even though you slay me, I will still praise you. Can you praise him in the midst of challenges? There is something Ezra said in the book of Ezra. That thing always comes to my mind. Ezra was moving from Babylon 
to Israel, to Jerusalem, to help build, because Nehemiah was doing the walls, Ezra was doing the foundation, and that was when Zerubbabel had to prophesy that the mountains shall be removed, but the love of God remains the same. During that time, there's something Ezra did. Ezra said, he said, it's so hard for me to ask the king to give me bodyguards to Jerusalem because I saw my God as too able that I could not stoop low to ask for help from the heat thing. Christians have come to a place that when we see people that are rich, even if they are, their ways are not right, we want to relate to them because we are loving money more than God. We relate to people because of gains. But those people need you more than you think. Ezra said, I cannot ask the king to bodyguard me. And so the Bible said, so he fasted three days for spiritual guard. So you know why we are fasting? We are fasting because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. The righteous running and he is safe. Amen. So we are fasting because his name is trustworthy. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. We are fasting because he's worthy to be praised. We are fasting because we can trust him for a supply. And you know why I joined the kingdom of God? You know why I got born again? He is a God that when the natural fails, the supernatural will take over. Mm. You see, we are not limited. Why I decided to serve the almighty God? Because I am not limited in the natural. You get me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I was driving, with my husband and I, we were driving in a thick snow. It was the 31st night, the snow was bad. And our car got stuck in the snow. And daddy came out to clear the snow so that he could drive through. But the more he was clearing the snow, the more the snow was coming. And, and the, car was, the car engine was on and on and on and on. And did you know that the gas in the car got finished? So I realized that the, the temperature had fallen so low and I thought I should go out to tell daddy, come inside. Because we can't, you can't clear this snow to move the car. By the time I got outside, his legs were dying off of the cold. We were stuck on a hill in the snow. And that day, I said to the Lord, I said, you know why I love you, Jesus, and you know why I'm serving you? Because you are not a human being. You work beyond the flesh. I serve you because when the flesh fails, the supernatural will take over. The power of our kingdom is too big for you to sit here and lament. We are not serving a God who is limited to humanity. And so in the car, leg frozen, leg dying. And I remember I said to God, I said, God, I love you. I went to lead a whole church into the new year. And I know we are not going to die on this road. You know, because you are not limited. You can turn. Human beings, you can turn angels into human beings to come and rescue us. And before I said that, there was a police car right by us. Two policemen came out and they said, how can we help you? And bet you, our insurance was not in good shape. 
So when I saw the police, I should have said, hey, let them not check the insurance. This police gave us a smile. He said, we see your car is frozen up here. I said, yes, sir. Then they just picked up the car and put it on top of their, they came with, um, you know, the car that lit, that thing that lit oh. car, what's the name? Tow car. And they tow our car at the back of the tow car and they asked us to sit by them and they drove us home. Mm. When they got there, they said, give us the address of where you want to put this car in case the car is not good. That's when I whispered to daddy, I said, there's no insurance on this car. Tell them to leave the car with us and let them go. <laughs> you know, when they left the car and they drove away, I turned my back and the car wasn't there. Mm. I said, no, these people, they wore a police uniform. First of all, we police who drive a tow car. No. It didn't strike our mind. Angels were working. <laughs> this is the God you serve. If anybody, if nobody will come and help you, he will make himself your, your helper. You are not limited to human beings. You cannot sit down and cry because a human being disappointed you. What's wrong with you? Come on, girl. You are bigger than that. You are bigger than that, man. You are bigger than that. A man have disappointed you and you keep hurting yourself and cry yourself. And I cannot even believe some of you say, I feel like I feel suicidal. You sick. God is God. Man is man. And that person that has disappointed you, it with, with, with a touch of God, that person can be dead and gone. And you, the same person hurting about the person, will turn around again and start crying, oh, I wish he was alive. You know, we, we just have to love God and forget about everything. He's a good God. Are you ready to pray? Yes. You ready to love him? Yes. Give him some kisses up there. Amen. He is good God. Amen. I don't care about how the enemy can push me to the wall. I say my God is a good God. Amen. If he answers my prayer, fine. If he does not answer my prayer, fine. He is God. And I have made up my mind, and my mind is fixed. I wish you can come to this state where I am to say that I'm done. Whether he answers me or not, I will love him to my last breath. I will trust him to my last breath. Don't you forget Abraham is still living by faith, even in heaven. He's still waiting for the redemption of Israel. Abraham in heaven is still living by faith. Because whatever God told him about Israel is not finished yet. So I will not be the first person to have my prayers not answered. And I will not be the last person to have my prayers not answered. Even our father Abraham is still trusting God that Israel will have peace. So what is the big deal? He is God. He does what he wants to do. He makes up his mind. He is processing something. And at times the thing he's doing even has nothing to do with your time and your season. We are all passing through this end. To somewhere else. He was bold enough to tell Daniel. Write down this vision. It shall come to pass when you are gone. He told Abraham. I said I'll give you this land. But it's not you who will inherit it. Your children's children will come and inherit it. You will finish trusting me. You will go. And then I will fulfill the promises. Can you imagine? So if you say you are not going to serve God because he gave you a promise and he did not keep it, you're sick. Because he kept his promises to generations. 
So whatever he promised you, if he doesn't do it today, he will do it tomorrow to your children's children. That's why I can't stop trusting him. That's why I can never turn my back on God no more. Because I've come to know he is very, very faithful. He is. If man can fail, it's not, it doesn't mean God is failing. Man is man. God is God. And even a man who did not fail you is because God did not permit it. Everything Amen. on planet earth is under God's control. The devil is not in charge of this earth. God is in charge of this earth. I announce it again. God is in charge of this planet earth. It doesn't matter how far the devil can go. Hell is waiting for him and he'll go back to hell. We are the sons of God. Our future is bright. We are born to be the head and not the tail. Yeah. We are above and not beneath. Enough of sorrow. Enough of misery. Yeah. Go back and sleep. Amen. Because God is in charge of your life. Amen. We give him all the praise. Yes, we give him all the glory. Yes, in Jesus name. Amen. 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 We are going to take off into prayer. You can take it off the, the, the media. We want to pray.